Hello everyone, welcome again to Level Change channel. Today we are going to talk about uh, f all flaps up landing on the 737. This uh, video is a request from a channel member. So let's jump in uh, to some uh, 737 manuals. And for this one, I'm going to start uh, with you uh, at the flight crew training manual and the flight crew training manual states that for all flaps up landing that the probability of both leading and trailing edge devices failing to extend is extremely remote okay so most probably you are not going to have this in real life okay so training and evaluations to this condition is not required so what Boeing is saying is that this is so rare that most probably uh, you are not going to face uh, this in your entire life so the training is not required even though they give some uh, guidelines to perform this kind of maneuver in case you encounter in real life okay so that is a known normal checklist okay no normal checklist for this condition and there is a note it says that you do the all flap landing only when directed by the trailing edge flaps up landing. What does it mean? It means that if you have a failure on your flaps, so let's say you try to extend your flaps and the flaps do not extend, you are going to perform one checklist that most probably is trailing edge flaps disagree or something like that. Okay, so when you perform the trailing edge flaps disagree, uh, if you cannot move the flaps anymore, uh, and when we are talking about flaps, we talk about the trailing edge flaps, the flaps at the uh, end of the wings so if you cannot extend those flaps uh, most probably with this checklist uh, will ask you to try to extend the leading edge devices the leading edge flaps and leading edge slices which are the flaps that you have in front of the wing so you can land at least with those flaps and then if that doesn't uh, happen uh, if you cannot extend also the leading edge flaps then you will go to the all flaps up landing so this is not a checklist that you are going to start with okay so you have to perform a few checklists before to make sure you cannot extend any kind of flap and then uh, you are going to perform this all flap up landing okay so let's continue and here it says that if a flaps up and slats up landing situation were to be encountered in service the pilot should consider the following techniques okay so if you are really unlucky and you cannot extend anything you cannot extend the leading edge you cannot extend the trailing edge flaps what we are supposed to do so after selecting a suitable landing airfield and prior to beginning the approach okay so a couple of things that you are going to do before uh, you start this approach you're going to consider reduction of airplane gross weight which means you have to burn off fuel to reduce your touchdown speed okay uh, I have one consideration one personal consideration for this uh, most probably if you are already uh, in this condition it's because you try to extend the flaps uh, on uh, arrival so most probably you don't have much fuel to burn okay of course uh, if you can still burn your uh, alternate fuel so you make sure you declare mayday to atc so you have the runway all reserved for you and then you can burn off that extra fuel that you were going to use if you are going uh, towards your alternate so now you don't you understand you're not going towards your alternate and then you are going to burn that fuel uh, the other consideration would be if you are uh, approaching to a short runway and then you start to extend your flaps and you realize you cannot extend your flaps then most probably you're going to use that alternate field to divert to a better place and then once you reach this place you don't re you don't have much uh, uh, field to burn okay uh, the only situation that I can really think uh, would be nice to burn uh, some fuel uh, is the situation that uh, you really have to come back to the airport uh, after takeoff okay uh, and that again 
the pilot in command will have to consider a couple of things. Let's assume that is a medical emergency, okay? So you need to come back because there is a passenger or a crew dying uh, inside that airplane. So you don't want to uh, really delay your landing, okay? So once you are within the limits for your tire speed, maybe it's better for you to land because uh, maybe it's better to save that person's life instead of burning fuel. Uh, of course, if you have enough runway uh, to land on this condition. Uh, have in mind, don't jeopardize the life of th all the others uh, because of uh, one guy uh, or one person that has a medical problem, but if you can perform a safe landing, uh, you should not uh, uh, delay this landing, okay? So that will be the only case. Uh, maybe you will think about burning fuel, otherwise most probably you will not have uh, much fuel anyway, okay? So it also says you have to fly a wide pattern to allow for the increased turning radius required for the higher maneuver speed. Okay, so which means uh, usually, when you are on approach, you are going to be flying with 100, 160 uh, knots uh, in the intermediate and on the final approach. So in this case, you will be flying much faster. So you have to understand that uh, your uh, turning radius will be bigger. Okay. So something to consider. It also states that establish final approximately 10 miles from the runway. Okay, so uh, this is subjective. Uh, it's telling you so to be on the final uh, with some margin. At some places you cannot. For example, if you are approaching to Guarulhos Airport in São Paulo, Brazil, usually the final there is eight miles because of other airports. Uh, around so you don't have much to do uh, but then in this case uh, consider configuring uh, your airplane and reducing the speed a little bit early even though eight miles is not far away from the eight miles that uh, Boeing recommends because what this 10 miles does it allows time to extend the gear and accelerate to the target speed while in level flight and complete all required checklists okay so that's why they want you to be at 10 miles. So if you are on 10 miles, you will have time to do everything properly and you are not going to rush on your approach. It says to maintain no lower than flaps up speed maneuver until established on final. And because you are maintaining at least flap up speed, you maneuver with normal bank angles until you are on final. Okay, there is a note here. This note was written by my previous operator. It says landing gear may be extended in order to help quicker deceleration. As soon as landing gear has been extended, request landing checklist. Okay, uh, another thing. Uh, for the final approach, it says that you should use an ILS or a GLS glide slope if available. That's something that we are going to do today. It also states to reduce the airspeed to the final approach speed until aligned with the final uh, oh, so, sorry, uh, do not reduce the airspeed to the final approach speed until you align with the final approach, okay? Which also complies with what is uh, written here. Maintain no lower than flap up maneuver speed until you establish on final, okay? So you do not reduce the airspeed to the final approach speed until you are aligned with the final approach. Before intercepting descent profile, increase, uh, sorry, decrease airspeed to command speed and maintain this speed until landing is assured. I'm going to explain all of this uh, to you on the sim uh, in a couple of minutes. The normal rate of descent on final is approximately 900 feet per minute due to the higher ground speed. Okay, of course, this is uh, depend on your weight, but around 900 feet is something that you can uh, expect. Uh, the final approach body altitude is approximately one to two degrees higher than flaps 30 approach. Okay, so do not make a flap approach, which means shallow glide path angle, or aim for the threshold of the runway. It's it's telling you, use the normal glide slope, use a normal uh, aim point, which is approximately 1,000 feet down the runway, okay? It also states that if you want, it's uh, acceptable to use the autopilot, but you cannot make an auto land, okay? Uh, speed brakes are not recommended for a speed reduction below 800 feet, which is a standard for any kind of approach. If the landing is anticipated beyond the normal touchdown zone, go around, okay? So if you know you are going to land uh, beyond 
the touchdown zone if you're going to land deeper on the runway do a go around don't try to continue uh, this approach and landing and how about the landing okay for the landing it states that you fly the airplane onto the runway at the recommended touchdown point this is really difficult you're going to see on this sim uh, because the airplane is much faster so any input that you uh, do on your yoke is going to change uh, your rate of descent uh, quite a lot okay so it also states to flare only enough to achieve an acceptable reduction in rate of descent okay do not allow the airplane to float what does it mean when you are on the approach in this case uh, you will have something like 900 feet per minute rate of descent what Boeing is telling you if you try uh, to make a smooth landing most probably you are going to float so just reduce the rate of descent to something acceptable and continue going down towards your aiming point okay do not make uh, a standard uh, flare like you were doing in a normal landing this is not a normal landing it says that floating just above the runway surface to deplete additional speed waste a variable runway and increase the possibility of a tail strike do not risk touchdown beyond the normal touchdown zone in effort to achieve a smooth landing so Boeing is very clear about this it also states and this is very important slight forward pressure on the control column may be needed to achieve touchdown at desired point and to lower the nose wheels to the runway and this is something that you are going to see on the microsoft flight simulator 2020 with the pmdg okay uh, most probably i'm going to um, to pull a little bit on the yoke uh to reduce the rate of descent but then as we are close to the runway uh there is a high chance that we have uh to push uh, our yoke uh against uh, the runway so the airplane actually lands and you lower uh the nose gear it's a little bit different than a normal landing when uh you have to be careful not uh, to the nose landing gear to come down really fast so you have to hold it i will not say hold it but you have to gently put the nose landing gear on the ground on the off flaps up landing most probably are going to do this not by uh pulling but by pushing your yoke a little bit okay uh it also says after lowering the nose wheels to the runway hold light forward control column pressure and expeditiously accomplish the landing roll procedure so once you touch down on the runway a little bit of forward pressure so that pressure that you are going that you were doing uh to lower your nose uh pushing your yoke you continue with that uh that hold uh light forward control column pressure okay you have to hold that thing uh immediate initiation of reverse thrust at main gear touchdown okay because reverse thrust is more effective at high speed and full reverse thrust allows the auto brake system to reduce brake pressure to the minimum level full reverse thrust is needed for a longer period of time less than maximum reverse thrust increases brake energy requirements and may result in excessive brake temperatures okay so we go full reverse as much as we need okay there's no idle reverse on this type of landing however the use auto brake is recommended auto brake setting should be consistent with runway length use manual braking if the acceleration is not suitable for the desired stopping distance okay so what uh, Boeing says about uh, uh, what Boeing means about the auto brake setting should be consistent with runway length okay first of all you need to make sure you are going to land within the runway limits the next step is that you should not use uh, a very high brake setting if you don't have to because that will also increase your uh, brake temperatures even though you are using the reverses that will also increase your brake temperature so uh, have something uh, in mind uh, you want to make a safe landing yes but you used to do you want to use uh, all the runway available for your landing because of the brake temperature okay so next step now uh, I'm going to take us to the sim 
Okay, so uh, as you can see, uh, let's assume that I was approaching here to Muscat uh, today, uh, Muscat in Oman, and I tried to extend my flaps, it didn't extend, then I follow the trailing edge flap disagree, uh, no normal checklist, uh, that checklist uh, tried to extend the leading edge devices, I could not extend the leading edge devices, and now I'm in the current situation where I made a missed approach, because I was approaching, I was trying to extend the flaps, nothing was working, so I had to go around, and now I'm on the holding uh, close to the airport, I'm back to 5,000 feet, and I'm going to do another checklist and the checklist that I have to do now and this checklist you are going to see on your screen right now is the all flap up landing okay so we did all the rest of the checklist and at the end we end up in all flap up landing no normal checklist what this checklist says what is the condition it says that the leading edge devices fail to extend and the trailing edge flaps are less than one. Something that you have to consider as well is that uh, if you started to extend the flaps and while the flaps were extending to one, you uh, the flaps were not able to reach on because of asymmetry or some kind of dis disagreement between uh, the both uh, a flap on the left and the right wing and you also try to extend the leading edge devices and you cannot. This is also all flap up -land. Okay, so what is all flap up landing is any time you cannot extend your leading edge in devices and your trailing edge devices are less than one, which is the case today. As you can see right here, uh, we have flaps up and nothing is moving. Okay, so what do you want with this checklist? You want to configure for a landing with leading edge devices retracted and trailing edge flaps less than one, which is the situation that we have. That is something very important that Boeing states again, is that do this checklist only when directed by the trailing edge flaps up landing checklist, okay? So you did trailing edge, uh, sorry, you did a trailing edge disagree, the trailing edge uh, disagree, no normal checklist, uh, revert you to the trailing edge flaps up landing checklist and the trailing edge uh, flaps up landing checklist uh, revert you to all flap uh, all flap up landing okay so uh, as Boeing stated in the flight crew training manual before you are not going to start from this you are going to extend your flaps you are going to try to extend your flaps with all the resources available on the airplane okay so now we are here it says again consider burning off fuel to reduce touchdown speed right now we have something like uh, less than 4,000 uh, kilograms of fuel and uh, we don't have much margin now. This is the uh, fuel that we are going to land. This is the weight that we are going to land. Of course, while we configure this airplane, while we are on holding here, we have uh, uh, some minutes and uh, the fuel will be burned while we are doing the rest of the checklist okay so the first thing for this checklist and this is very important i'm going to put here in blue it tells us to set vref 40 plus 55 knots okay so we need to know what is our vref 40 for the current weight and then we are going to add 55 knots and this is our new vref okay so to do this let's go to our uh fmc okay so uh, so let's go to our FMC here and what we have when we press initial reference it tells us that our current weight is uh, 56.2 tons okay and that means for a flap 30 a speed sorry for a flaps 40 a speed of 130 knots okay so we did the first approach and we were landing with flaps 40, 131 knots, okay? So what they want now, they want as a new VREF, not 130, but 130 plus 55, which means 185. Another thing, note that we are not going to land with flaps 40, we are going to land with flaps up, okay? So we cannot select flaps 40 here. We should be able to select uh, flaps up, and then 
slash our new VREF, which is 130 plus 55, which means 185, okay? This is how we do on the real airplane. Uh, here, PMDG doesn't allow you to select up and 185. It tells you uh, that this is an uh, invalid entry. But I figure out that it does allow you to select flap zero, which is the same as up, slash, then 185, okay? So how we are going to land this airplane? With flaps up and 185 knots, okay? Once again, where is this 185 knots coming from? From this uh, blue item that you have on the screen right now, which means you're going to set VRF 40 plus 55 knots, okay? So the next step now is to uh, let me see, I'm going to change the color again, and then we check the no normal configuration landing distance tables in performance in, uh, in flight or another approved source, okay? We have uh, another approved source here on the uh, 737 by PMDG. We can go to our tablet, we can go to the performance tool, we can go to landing route, and something that I want you to know is that I just did a video about how this works, okay? So I'm going to leave you uh, this video about the performance with no normal maneuvers uh, calculation uh, on the video description, so you have a link for this video, and I also will put a card here on top on the left side okay on the left sorry on the right side on your screen on the top you will see uh, now this uh, video link as well so basically what we want I'm not going to explain everything that I'm doing but we are going to land in Muscat we are going to land on runway 26 right okay so I'm going to import uh, the current uh, uh, details from the airplane and I'm going to import the weather as well the only thing I'm going to make here is all flap up VRF 5 and just to comply with our FCTM all operative okay uh, we are going to land then in uh, 1216 feet with maximum manual brake okay uh, changing here I already show you on the previous video that it doesn't change uh, the runway distance uh, because it is pretty much brake 3 or maximum auto is with this speed and everything is something that uh, is not going to be calculated. If you want more information about this, go on the previous video, okay? So we leave it, uh, for example, in max auto, all flaps up landing, and as you can notice, our VREF is 189, which means 185, in this case, plus 5 knots, but if we were going to calculate with the current weight that we had, which was 56,200, you will see that they, they match perfectly. So, VREF, uh, sorry, this is your uh, approach speed, is going to be uh, 190, okay, so VREF add, we don't need and our VREF is 185, now it's correct, okay? So with the current weight that we had, uh, all flap up landing, no VREF add, our VREF is 185, which is the same as we calculated here, flaps up 185. So we make sure all match and we have all the information correct, okay? So with this kind of uh, landing distance of uh, 1,200 meters on a runway with 4,000 meters, okay, most probably I'm going to uh, not go maximum uh, manual or maximum uh, auto, I'm going to go break 3 and maybe break 2. So I want to be a little bit conservative today and we are going to select uh, break uh, 3 for our landing, okay? So break 3 is there. Let's continue with our checklist now. The checklist states that uh, we maintain flap up maneuver speed until established on final approach. This was written on the FCTM as well. 
okay and then uh, we limit bank angle to 15 when their speed is less than the flaps up maneuvering speed and the checklist is complete except the third items so i'm going to go to the third items later on but i'm going to explain uh for you now uh number five and number six uh, which is also part of the FCTM, okay? So I want you to understand a couple of things. Uh, first, what is our uh, minimum maneuver speed? So let's go here, let me try to find a camera that is going to give us the PFD. Uh, yeah, this one, okay? So what happened is, we have uh, flaps up. So we are not supposed to reduce from flap up speed until we are on final, okay? So I'm going to make a speed selection here. Uh, let me press uh, level change just to change the mode here and now I can change the speed, okay? So the speed is right now by FMC204, which is our holding speed for this, but I can reduce down to flap up speed, which means 199 knots, as you can see right now, 199 knots so i'm not uh, supposed to reduce the speed below 199 but my approach speed will be 190 okay which is 185 plus 5 knots okay so it's going to be 190 so i have to keep at least 199 at this present condition and once i'm on final okay then i can bring my airspeed down to 1 nine zero okay so you do not reduce to one nine zero now you have to reduce uh to down minimum one ninety nine and then once i'm below one ninety nine i'm slower than one ninety nine then i cannot bank more than fifteen degrees right now as you can see the airplane is banking twenty five degrees okay so this is not acceptable if you have a speed less than the flap up speed okay that's why you maintain flap up speed while you are maneuvering and once you are on the final once you are in, you intercept the glide slope then you reduce to the uh, approach speed set the gear down and most probably you will be ready to complete your approach okay so this is what the FCTM states before about not reducing your airspeed below flap up not reducing your speed to the approach speed unless you are on final okay so i'm going to go back uh, to the uh, vnav okay which is going to maintain 204 knots for now okay so let's go and let's continue with our uh checklist okay so once uh, we complete everything we have to do our uh deferred item descent checklist which is state for pressurization is the same landing altitude that we had before we didn't uh, uh went to the alternate airport if you were going to go to the alternate airport that's the time that you check your landing altitude okay you also do uh, a recall okay so let me do this uh, recall uh right now you were not able to see let me see this okay now you can see i'm going to do the recall here on this side okay so everything is checked there is nothing wrong with our airplane apart from the flaps auto brake we already select to brake three and our landing data is vref 40 plus 55 which means in this case 185 and minimums is the same as the previous approach 229 approach briefing is completed is the same uh, brief, uh same uh, type of approach that we did on the first attempt and now uh, what we uh, read on the fctm is the rest of our briefing okay that is just another thing that you have to understand how you go around in this case okay so go around procedure review it states that you do the normal go around procedure okay so except you are going to do the normal thing except that you are going to limit bank angle to 15 when their speed is less than the flap up maneuver speed so remember anytime you are below flap up speed you cannot make a turn with more than 15 degrees uh, of bank okay and then uh, once you uh, climb out 
uh, of the runway once you pass usually 1000 1500 depends also on your company policy and the missed approach procedure you accelerate to flap up maneuvering speed and from this time now you can do uh, normal turns okay so if we have to go around we are going to go around the same as we were doing before we are going to press toga we are going to rotate towards uh, the go around attitude we are going to maintain in this case the flaps up because we do not have flaps uh, once the airplane starts climbing we select gear up once we pass 1000 feet then we accelerate and from this point we can do normal turns next step is the approach checklist approach checklist states for the altimeter so the altimeters they are already set at 1017 okay and there are some additional uh, procedures that we have to do uh, today and these additional procedures I was testing that's why we have to comply with these it all works fine in the PMDG so these additional deferred items is states for fasten belt switch to position on okay so the fasten belt switch let me show you here uh, we have to go all the way here and make sure they are on why because in a normal approach if you keep uh, the fasten belts in auto once you are below 10,000 feet or once you extend the flaps you are going to have uh, the fasten belt switches uh, as on but in this case because you are not extending the flaps there is a chance that they will stay off so you make sure they are out the next step on your uh, additional deferred item is the ground proximity flap inhibit switch you set flap inhibit so with this one that I'm going to do uh, right now, which is at the bottom here, is at this position. Let me show you. Okay, this one. So you have the ground proximity flap inhibit. Usually they are in normal. So you open this guard and you take it uh, up, okay, to the inhibit position. Uh, so what you are doing at this stage, you are telling the airplane, I know. I'm not going to land with the normal landing flaps, which is flaps 30 or 40, okay? So if you do not do this, once you are on the final approach, you do not have your landing flaps 30 or 40 selected, you are going to hear a siren in the cockpit uh, that is supposed to tell you that something is wrong. As you know, you are going to have uh, this approach without flaps. You are already telling the system, don't advise me about the flaps because I don't want to know I know what I'm doing okay so this is the main uh, objective of this item okay the next step is uh, for the landing checklist okay so as we are approaching uh, our uh, procedure here on the final we need to select the engine start switch to continuous we need to arm the speed brake we need to set the landing gear down and the flaps will be up no lights in this case okay so flap up no light so what we have to do now engine start switch to continuous arm the speed brake set the landing gear down and complete this approach okay so that's everything that i had uh, for you technically wise so let's jump and fly this procedure right now okay so something that i'm going to do i'm going to the fmc and i'm going to go uh, on the hold and exit hold and I'm going to execute the exit hold 3400 is the altitude for the fix that we are flying now so I'm going to select 3400 I'm going to go for level change okay I'm going to reduce my airspeed to flap up speed I don't want to be fast on this approach so we have our ILS selected we have our uh, our frequency and our course for the ILS is selected uh, we have the speed as uh, we burn some fuel we can even uh, check our speed again so now is one to nine so we can say that we are going to land with flaps zero and VREF of 184 again VREF 40 plus 55 okay so 184 just correcting uh, this speed because of the weight that we have now and we are all set okay we are descending 3400 
we already have the ILS India Micro Mail set. We have the localizer, we have the glide slope, all is correct. What we can do now, we can arm our approach mode. Just want to make sure that our missed approach is to 6,000. Yes, it is. So we will be going down. Localizer is captured at this stage. Okay, so localizer capture. Uh, and here we are. Glide slope is above. We are descending 3,400. Okay, so as of now, we are on final. I'm going to select my engine start switch to continuous. I'm going to select uh, my uh, speed brake to the arm position. Okay, here we are. Okay, so all set. Now we are on the final. Glide slope is captured. What I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, set the missed approach altitude of 6000 for this procedure. And I'm also going to select our minimus, sorry, our approach speed of 189 184 plus 5 as you can notice the speed goes up because we do not have flaps so i select the landing gear down and this will allow me uh, to reduce my air speed for approach okay so now we do the landing checklist which was stating to engine start switching continuous speed brake arm at green light landing gear down three greens and the flap is up no light okay so now everything is set i'm just waiting uh, for the speed to to come down okay uh, if you have to you can use your speed brake down to 800 feet or your company policy which usually states most of the companies 1000 feet above the runway okay so we have 2500 feet to run now and as you can notice, we are on an uh, 8 mile final now. So that's why it was important to establish on final at least at 10 miles. I did it at 12 because this procedure here has a uh, fix at 12 miles that we can hold. Okay, so that's it. Uh, for you to understand, once again, we are below flap up speed, so we cannot bank more than 15 uh, degrees. And here we are towards our runway. Okay, so we are passing 2,000 feet above the airport. The autopilot is off. I'm going to take... I'm going to keep my uh, webcam here. It's not uh, interfering with the instruments, okay? And I'm going to fly like this, most probably, okay? So at this stage, I want to uh, fly with auto throttle off. Okay, so here we go. Auto throttle off and also autopilot off. Remember, this is very hard. I'm going to do like this, it's easier for this type of approach. Okay, so we don't want to float, we want to land at the touchdown zone, and there is a chance that we are going to need some forward pressure on the yoke to put the nose gear down and also to land at the correct point and we have to keep that pressure once we are uh, on the ground okay i lost the localizer a little bit so i'm correcting make sure you do not have additional speed okay so i'm reducing my my thrust here i want to come down most probably I'm going to, to hear sync rate on this type of approach. Okay, less speed, less thrust. It's almost close to idle. Some legs on my simulator. Ah, oh, this is not nice. Sorry guys, this is my sim. Okay. This is my sim, but we can do the landing. Okay. Speed brake, reverses. We try to maintain the center of the runway. That the light forward pressure. Okay, to maintain the airplane on the runway. This was not supposed to happen. This is something on my sim. 
I still have to adjust my sim, but as you can see, uh, all uh, the procedures and techniques I follow you through. Uh, just the landing you couldn't see. Uh, I'm seeing the same thing that you can see right now, okay? So this is my sim, this is my graphic card, this is my new selections here, so reverses go out. Okay. And for some reason now is this moved again. Okay, I'm going to retract the speed brake. And with this speed here, we can vacate at the end, which is what we want to do when we are on a uh, off flap up landing, okay? We don't want uh, to use uh, less than a good portion of the runway. Of course, you don't have to come all the way down to the end and that's it okay uh i'm sorry uh for this um doctor that we had it was really big uh i don't even know how i was able to uh land in uh, this uh, situation uh but we did uh the only thing i'm going to do it again another day i'm going to perform this flap up landing again but just the landing part okay i'm not going to go through all the details so stay tuned on this channel uh i'm going to record this again uh without any kind of leg so i'm not going to go through uh, all the through all the procedures okay uh i'm just going to uh show on the next uh uh, video only this type of approach okay so uh, I hope you like this kind of content uh, it was not very nice to see the landing as I told you but uh, I was able to explain you all the procedures so basically you try to land uh, with not much fuel because that is going to reduce your overall weight and is going to bring your speed down uh, the next step is that uh, you have to really uh, understand what is your VREF, which is in this case is a VREF for flaps 40 plus 55 knots. Okay, the 55 knots is uh, to accommodate your uh, your current flap position. Okay, which is flap up. This flap, uh, sorry, this new VREF will still be below flap up speed so you maneuver with flap up speed and once you are on the final you reduce to your approach speed and I was able to show you that to reduce to your flap uh, sorry to your approach speed you will need your gear down okay that's something that you are going to need because if you keep flap up idle most probably you are going to be accelerating on uh, the glide slope without uh, the gear so once you are established on the final once you establish on the glide slope uh, it's a good time for you to select your gear down if you didn't do before if you did it before no problem as well maybe you even uh, extend your gear to burn uh, some fuel okay then you do the normal approach uh, the landing is a little bit different okay so once you are sure you are going to land you can take your uh, thrust to idle and by that I mean around 50 feet uh, like a normal landing okay so a little bit before maybe at 50 feet you close your thrust lever do not wait until 30 or until 10 uh, because otherwise you're going to float a lot and for your landing uh, do not try to make a smooth landing just reduce the rate of descent uh, most probably you need some light forward pressure on your woke on your yoke sorry to put your airplane on the ground and also to uh, nose your landing gear and once you touch on the ground full reverse let the auto brake work and then start judging if you are going to uh, stop close to the end of the runway if you are in doubt about your uh, landing margins you can always go manual brake and brake a little bit more if you are very comfortable with it you can remove the auto brake and start braking manually keep reverse as much as you can so that is going to lower the brake energy so you will not have uh, hot brakes in this case once you are coming 
to a complete stop or something similar then you stall your reverses and then it's up to you most probably in this situation i would stop on the runway i will let the fire brigade to check my brakes to check my gear uh, to make sure everything is in place and once we are sure that is no fire all the tires they are uh, normal and we are able to continue the taxi then we cancel the mayday and we continue uh, towards the gate to disembark the passenger if something goes wrong of course you will follow the standard procedure especially if you have a fire and the firefighters cannot control the fire most probably you have to go uh, for an evacuation but this is, is something extra this is something for all non normals that you are going to have not only for all flap up landing okay so thank you guys so much uh, for your uh, continued support we reached 4,000 subscribers we have around 60 members that contributes with this channel every month and remember if you are a member you can request videos just like uh, Paulo asked for this one thank you so much guys and I see you next time bye bye